Good evening, everyone. We are going to open uh, with our student recognition ceremony this evening. And we do this three times a year, and it's really to celebrate a number of the accomplishments based upon whether it was fall season, winter season, or spring season. And I think that uh, this evening you're going to see the, the real range of the talented students that we have across the district. And it's an important part of our, our, our community to bring our students and the parents and guardians here together to celebrate those accomplishments. We, we believe strongly in, in, in bringing everybody out uh, and making sure that we honor the students that bring so much honor to our school district. So uh, before we get started with that, we'd like to um, call the administration from Friel Township up at this point in time. So we uh, have been, Friel Township High School is fortunate to have received a $10,000 model classroom grant from the Ocean First Foundation. Uh, and Ocean First Manalpin uh, received a similar grant, uh, I believe it was two years ago, it might have been last year. Um, and Ocean First have been terrific partners to the Friel Regional High School District and here representing them this evening are Joe Antosca, who is the Vice President and Chief Administrative Officer, Nina Anuario, who is the Senior Vice President, and Linda Petrolito, who is the Vice President. So I'd like to call them up. And I'm going to walk down for the uh, photo op. Jersey. So it's our pleasure to be here tonight. 
We're thrilled that, uh, that Friel Township submitted such a great application and won. And Mina will tell you just a little bit about that application. Thank you, Joe. Just to expand on what Joe was talking about with the scholarships, that is any high graduating senior from the high schools in our footprint that are going to Monmouth University, Georgian Court University, Ocean County College, or Brookdale are eligible to apply for the Ocean First Grant right through the school. All of the guidance counselors are aware of that. And this year we've doubled that commitment because we are including the southern regions and we'll be giving $400,000 for scholarship money in 2017. So let me tell you a little bit about your school and what makes you different. There were 86 schools that applied for our grant. We were only giving 15. We were only giving five to the high schools. So you think of that number. Now, they have to come up, they have to write these grants, and they have to be innovative. They're not your regular run-of-the-mill grants. Check off this box, tell us uh, you know, the dollar amount you need, you know, just be very basic. They had to be creative, collaborative. They had to reach deep. They had to come up with a theme. They had to include other sectors of the school. It had to be inclusive. It had to meet so many challenges. And then what happens is it goes before a panel, a panel of business people, those that serve on our foundation board, come from every different walk of life. And I think there's only one on the board that comes from education. So their views of, these, of how these grants are written are very different. So people in your school got together, especially your principal and your vice principal, and they said, let's challenge ourselves and let's go out of the box, let's go get some money that we're not just getting because it's, it's owed to us from the tax rolls or from the state grants. Let's go out there and let's find some additional money to make our classrooms better than other classrooms. And this is what sets you apart. Freehold Township High School will use their grant to provide an innovative collaborative space that is used all day, every day, across all grade levels and courses to promote inquiry-based learning and problem solving. A think tank. Teachers will be able to reserve the classroom to support project-based learning with students participating in active learning experiences that bridge all disciplines of study. <coughs> Research has shown that project-based learning is critical to student mastery of the key competencies essential for college and career readiness, including critical thinking, conflict resolution, and collaborating to reach a shared goal. Through project-based learning, instructors and staff will support students in developing a deeper understanding of content, improving the skills necessary for collaborative learning, and applying knowledge and skills within college and career settings. This is the difference. Your school is also going to commit $30,000 out of your 2016-17 operating budget to begin the transformation of the target, targeted classroom. With their grant, they will add interactive technology features and provide teaching staff with professional development. That's what sets you apart. That's what makes you unique and different. Congratulations on being one of the recipients of our $10,000 model classroom grant. Thank you. We brought the real check. The ceremonial check was already given, but the real check is being delivered today to Elizabeth Higley, your school principal, and Dr. David Bleakley, your, he is your assistant vice principal. Thank you. Again, uh, to folks' motion first, they've been a terrific friend to the Frio Regional High School District. Um, and, and, and with all the uh, capacity that we have in our six high schools, I would have been surprised if one of our high schools didn't receive the, uh, the grant. So I feel good about that. Uh, we're we're going to welcome uh, our student portion, and we are going to begin this evening with Mr. Boylan from Marlboro High School. recognition ceremony. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to thank the Board of Education and Mr. Sampson for reporting us tonight to recognize our students in the district. Thank you very much. And also to thank the parents for all the support that they've given us throughout the course of the year. Shortly, many of my colleagues and I will be acknowledging commended students and semi-finalists in the National Merit Scholarship Program and National AP Scholars. I would like to first take the time to explain the criteria 
utilized to acknowledge these outstanding accomplishments. The National Merit Scholarship Program is a United States academic scholarship competition for recognition and university scholarships. The program began in 1955. About 1.6 million juniors in more than 22,000 high schools entered the program by taking the 2015 preliminary SAT National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test. Of these 1.6 million students, approximately 50,000 high scores qualify for this recognition. There are varying categories of recognition, commended students. About 34,000 students, or two-thirds of the high scores, are recognized for their scores and for their academic promise. Semi-finalists, about 16,000 students, or one-third of the high scores, are the highest scoring entrants in each state and are also recognized for their academic promise. This nationwide pool of semi-finalists represents less than 1% of U.S. high school seniors. Tonight, we're also acknowledging the students who are national AP scholars. Advanced placement examinations are taken each May by students at participating educational institutions. The tests are the culmination of a year-long advanced placement course. The AP grades that are reported to students, high schools, colleges, and universities in July are on the AP's five-point scale. The honor of being named National AP Scholar is granted to students in the United States who receive an average score of at least four in all AP exams taken and scores of four or higher on eight or more of these exams, which is truly quite an accomplishment. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge the academic achievements for the following students from Marlboro High School. Our commended students in the 2017 National Merit Program, when I call your name, please come forward. Krishna Batuta. <laughs> Emily, Emily Chang. Michael Connolly. Evan Dang. Jennifer Franklin. Sean Colola. Amarita Cara. Zachary Lacoste. Robert Landy. Melissa Lee. Matthew Linder. Shanna Martin. Yaha Mukherjee, Rashawn Nagaraj, Megha Naviskar, Rohan Three, Anjali Patel, Avni Patel, Manali Patel. Anna Keith Sarkar, David Stein, Michael Wang, Serena Yao, and Patricia Zhu. Over to Mr. 
Friday, or supervise the rest of the curricular activities. Mr. Ryan. Good evening. We're going to start with some activities. Uh, first, we have a Boy Scout who earned his rank of Eagle Scout. And I know there's a couple other Eagle Scouts being honored tonight, so I'm going to give you a quick synopsis of what a young man has to do to earn this rank. The fact that a boy is an Eagle Scout has always carried with it a special significance, not only in scouting, but also as he enters higher education, business or industry, or community service. The award is a performance-based achievement whose standards have well maintained over the years. Not every boy who joins the Boy Scout troop earns the Eagle Scout rank. Only about 5% of Boy Scouts do so. Nevertheless, the goal of scouting, the citizenship training, character development, and personal fitness remain important for all Scouts, whether or not they attain the Eagle Scout rank. To earn the Eagle Scout rank, a Boy Scout must fulfill requirements in the areas of leadership, service, and outdoor skills. A number of specific skills are required to advance through the ranks. To advance, a Boy Scout must pass specific tests that are organized by requirements and merit badges. Merit badges signify the mastery of certain outdoor skills, as well as helping boys increase their skill in an area of personal interest. Of the 130 plus merit badges available, a total of 21 must be earned to qualify for an Eagle Scout, with 13 badges specifically required. While a life scout, the scout must plan, develop a service project to benefit any religious institution, school, or community. As a demonstration of leadership, the scout must plan the work, organize the personnel needed, and direct the project to its completion. I'd like to call up Jeffrey Allenhoff. and has obtained his, his rank of Eagle Scout. In order to achieve the rank of Eagle Scout, Jeffrey had to do an Eagle Scout project. Jeffrey's Eagle Scout project was the creation of a promotional video on behalf of the Ashley Lauren Foundation, a charity committed to, to providing hope to help pediatric cancer families throughout New Jersey. Silver Medal in Girl Scouts. The Congressional Award consists of four categories, including volunteering, physical activity, a personal goal, and an excursion with an emphasis on community service. To earn the Congressional Award, she acted as a counselor to young adults with special needs. To fulfill the physical activity, she did competitive dance, and for excursion, she spent two nights in the woods with no electricity. <laughs> On November 19 through 20, 2017, 13 Marlboro students attended the JSA Fall State Conference at the Renaissance Hotel in Woodbridge, New Jersey. For the two days, the students participated in debates and other activities. We had three students take first place in the debates and they earn their gavel and they get to, they will move on to the Winter Congress. Janine Faraki, and Ralph to San Diego to compete in the FCCLA National Leadership Conference. Jennifer Hahn, Jennifer Franklin, and Niha Anajiri competed in the entrepreneurship team event as a team. These girls worked very hard and it paid off. They won a gold medal in the event. Thank you. 
National History Day announced its winners for the 42nd annual Kenneth Daring National History Day contest. More than 600,000 students from around the world competed. Our senior division entry from each National History Day affiliate received an outstanding affiliate entry. This year, Marlboro High School's Business Learning Center students, Shanna Martin, Evan Dang, and Rebecca Lowe, were chosen to receive the honor to represent New Jersey in their senior group performance. <laughs> FBLA. I'd like to call down Avni Patel and Alan Shankerman. <laughs> Avni Patel in accounting one and Alan Shankerman in accounting two finished top five in the nation at the FBLA competition this past summer. <laughs> James is first team all shore, and he is the NJ.com Short Conference Goalie of the Year. <laughs> Last on our soccer team, I'd like to call up Philip Ringel. PJ is better known. First team all shore, first team all group four, first team all state, and he's the NJ.com short conference player of the year. <laughs> TJ is one of the most inspirational people you will ever meet. Congratulations, boys. She is not here. She's actually at practice, and she's at practice during every single board meeting that we have because she is her, the way her, her team work. Um, Melissa Osterita is a junior. She was selected first team all state, first team all shore. She was the short conference vault and all around champion. She took second place on the beam and the floor. She was the Central Jersey state sectional vault, floor, and all around champion. And she was the overall second place in bars, fifth place in the all-around. She also broke 
three school records at Marlboro, which she broke as a freshman, then rebroke as a sophomore, and now rebroke them again. She is the vault champion at a 9.85 out of 10, bars at a 9.65 out of 10, and all around 38.85 out of 40. Uh, Melissa has already verbal to Penn State as a sophomore. I cannot wait to see what she does this year. So congratulations to Melissa. <laughs> Uh, one, one of the things that we do as the as the awards that run across all six schools come up, like the National Merit Scholar, Eagle Scouts, that's why the first one goes a little bit longer because we try to give everybody the in-depth explanation of what those accolades actually are. Uh, so I'd like to call up Mr. Roberman uh, for Howell High School. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to be here tonight. My name is Jeremy Robberman. I'm the proud principal at Howell High School. I, too, as Mr. Boylan did, would like to thank the Board of Education, our central administration, our superintendent, Mr. Sampson. Obviously, a special night like this wouldn't happen without them and all the support that they give us throughout the year. Uh, I'd also like to congratulate all the uh, students who are out here this evening uh, getting awards. Uh, as you can hear, uh, there's some pretty impressive students here tonight. We have some ourselves. So, without further ado, I'm going to introduce the commended students in the 2017 National Merit Program. First up is Roxana Altus. Tatiana Brown. Audrey Chu. Samantha Moore. <laughs> Olivia Tu. Okay, I'm going to turn the microphone over to the supervisor of extracurricular activities, Mr. PGN. Good evening, I'm Mr. Meehan, Supervisor of Extracurricular Activities at Howell High School. Um, I'd like to go through our activities first. Um, I'm going to go over our All Shore Chorus team from Howell. We had 20 students accepted, it was the highest in Mamas and Ocean County. I'm going to start with, uh, I'm going to bring them all up. I need to stay here, guys, the first 16, and then we have some extras that have to go on. Um, Josh Rickling. <laughs> Michael Olson. Maria Bucks. Joe Crescenzio, uh, Griffin Hagel, Sam Gallup, Lauren Carter, Emily Soper, Carly Goldfar, Lauren Hudson, Jessica Bonito, Adam Fight, Jacqueline Smith, Zoli, Jessica Dolch, and Vicky Fleisch. The next four people I'm going to call up are also Old Shore, of course. And they were also named to the 2017 National Association for Music Education All Eastern Honors Course. Lindsay Churin, Michaela <laughs> Long, Lena Sandow, and Liana Santana. Cusimano and Audrey Chu.
These young ladies were named the merit winners of the 2017 National Young Arts Foundation competition. They were picked out of 12,000 applicants from across the country, and they were selected for their singing submissions. Congratulations, ladies. <laughs> The following six students won the New Jersey Rising Stars High School School Classical Music Competition. Based on our selections of opera, they performed at the Winners Concert in November for two sold-out crowds at the Algonquin Theater. The person I'd like to bring up is Ciara Di Meleo. Carly Goldfarb, Alexa Chalnik, Lindsay Charon, Rachel Shelley. <laughs> now, the, the nice lady in charge of this is um, Ms. Regina uh, McAllen. She's not here with us tonight. Um, without her, I don't know where these young ladies would be and these young men. Um, but nice job. And congratulations to every single one of you. Nice job. <laughs> Moving on to sports. Um, at this time, I'd like to bring to the podium Daniel Cacciatore. <laughs> Daniel's the captain of our football team. Uh, he's a great young man, did a nice job for us this year. Um, in the sport of football, there's the Maxwell Award, it's one of the oldest awards given out in the sport. Um, it is given out to students that not only excel on the field, um, but excel in the classroom academically. Um, Daniel was selected, he's one of 51 students in the state of New Jersey, selected for the Media Maxwell Award. Daniel, congratulations. <laughs> the next student I'd like to mention, she uh, could not make it, she is our gymnast, uh, Monica Servideo. Uh, Monica was a state champion this year in the uneven bars. Um, she overcame an injury last year. Uh, she did extremely well in freshman sophomore year. Um, last year suffered an injury. Um, was managed to come back this year and, and did a great job on Andy Bars, who was named uh, state champion. Congratulations to Monica. <laughs> and our last athlete I'd like to call up is Neve Hayes. She's <laughs> had an incredible season. She's had an incredible career at Howell. Um, Neve is uh, one of our cross country runners. She was named first team all shore, first team all state. She was also named short track coaches associations, girls cross country, runner of the year. She broke the Holmdale course record for Howell by 25 seconds, shattered the record by a previous holder. Um, she had, like I said, an incredible career so far at Howell. She's going to continue running. Um, you want me to mention college? <laughs> Neve is entertaining UPenn, and I believe she's going. Um, she's something special, and, and they're definitely going to steal grabbing Neve Case. Um, Neve, congratulations. <laughs> nice job. Thank you, Mr. Meehan. Uh, now I'd like to call up uh, Mr. Simon from Colts Neck High School. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for, uh, again, I'll just echo the sentiments. We appreciate the 
we get to do this to celebrate the fine array of students we have in all six of our high schools. Uh, we congratulate all the students that are receiving honors tonight, all the proud principals of all the other buildings, and we thank the Board of Ed and Mr. Sampson for putting together this evening. Um, we're going to start with um, recognition of our Eagle Scouts, but uh, I know my colleagues are probably get tired of hearing me introduce our Eagle Scouts this way, but uh, I, 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 uh, I just can't help myself. Um, I myself am an Eagle Scout, I'm one of five brothers that are all Eagle Scouts, um, and tonight I'm actually very proud that while my fourth son will also be earning his Eagle Scout and be rec getting recognized tonight, um, the streak in my uh, generation is uh, extending as uh, he is the eighth grandchild, grandson in a row receiving Eagle Scout, so needless to say, in the Simon household, uh, scouting and uh, being an Eagle Scout is, uh, is, is not something we take lightly. Um, and so it makes me even more proud as a principal to be able to introduce three young men tonight who have earned this rank. So I'm going to start out with uh, Gennaro Ruggieri. Gennaro, come on up. Right. Love that uniform, man. Way to go. Gennaro. Received the rank, uh, Janelle is a senior at Colts Neck High School, received the rank of Eagle Scout on October 6th. His service project involved building a walkway entrance at the Bucks Mills Community Center to help alleviate flooding both in the parking lot and at the main entrance. To complete his project, Janelle collaborated with a local engineer and the head of the Parks Department to design the walkway. He then had to raise over $1,200 to pay for the proper materials, the bulk of which came by way of yard sales Gennaro held. He led a group of 50 volunteers for a total of 300 person hours to complete the task. Congratulations, Gennaro. <laughs> Second Eagle Scout I'd like to recognize tonight is Robert Michael Hulse III. Come on up, Robert. <laughs> Robert is a junior at Colson High School. On April 30th, 2016, Robert completed his Eagle Scout service project and was awarded the rank of Eagle Scout on November 30th, uh, which is located at a local nature preserve in Colts Neck. Robert led a group of 23 scouts, parents, and family members in his effort to improve the over nature preserve. The project included removing an old sign, replacing it with an information kiosk, fixing a driveway by adding blue stone, assembling and installing six bird houses, one owl house, adding trail markers, repairing two vandalized benches, and installing a flagpole, and that's all. <laughs> Congratulations, Robert. <laughs> Our third Eagle Scout being recognized tonight is Stephen O'Keefe. Come on up, Stephen. <laughs> Stephen is a senior at Colts Tech, received his... Uh, he earned his Eagle Scout in March and just yesterday held his court of honor. His project was to restore the historic fence line at Monmouth Battlefield State Park. Stephen led 50 people during his effort, which included lifting fence line of a tenth of a mile to clear overgrown vegetation and debris. Stephen and his workers also replaced rotted wood and rebuilt the fence. The fence line sits at the hedgerow, the site of the most intense fighting during the Battle of Monmouth. To help complete this project, Stephen collected donations from Wegmans and Staples. Stephen is hoping to either attend the uh, University of Notre Dame on the ROTC program or to attend the Naval Academy, uh, which is ironic as he would be the first member of our LPS program to become a member of the Naval Academy. So we're looking forward to that and we hope that that will be the case for him. Congratulations, Stephen. And my final portion before turning it over to our uh, rather lengthy but successful athletics uh, piece with Mr. Arneo, I would like to ask the following seven students to come down. Please hold your applause till I read all of the names, actually eight students. Uh, Dylan Adlin, Brian Chahansky, Sarah Clark, Michelle Dabrowski, Rayanne Giannatasio, Sonia Priven, Ben Samarco, and Ryan Tompkins. These students are the Colts Neck High School PSAT and MSQT Commended Scholars for the class of 2017. Congratulations.
Thank you. I'm now going to turn the program over to Mr. Arneo, our supervisor of extracurricular activities, who will introduce several teams and students for uh, recognition this fall in athletics. Thank you, Mr. Simon. I would first like to thank administration and the Board of Education for giving us the opportunity to recognize academic and athletic, the academic and athletic achievements of our students tonight. I would also like to congratulate the administration, coaches, parents, and students from our fellow district schools. You should all be very proud of what you've accomplished. To start the night off for Colts Neck Athletics, I would like to ask Coach Doug Phillips and the Colts Neck High School girls soccer team to make their way down to the front. <laughs> Not all of them are here. I'll read the team member names. Victoria Spieler, Layla Rosenthal, Isabella Pecorero, Jenna Buckley, Christy Makula, Crystal Cutler, Isabella Fitzhenry, McKenna Burns, Lauren Feaster, Erin Crumble, Peyton Curell, Kayla Lee, Sedona Samaris, Kristen Gambardella, Alexandra Ryan, Cassidy Stepnoski, Kara Camarco, Noel Conforti, Tara Walensek, Nicole Lowley, and Frankie Tagliaferri. This year's team won their second straight short conference tournament championship, this time with a three to nothing victory over a very talented Frio Township squad. Uh, it's been a pleasure to watch them over the past few years compete on the field. Congratulations on winning this very difficult tournament for a second straight year. I would like to recognize some of the following individuals for their individual honors. Lauren Feaster was named first team A North and first team All Shore. Kayla Lee was named first team A North and first team All Shore. She was also mentioned third team All State Group Four. Frankie Tagliaferri was named first team A North. She was the A North MVP, first team All Shore, first team All State Group Four, and first team All State for all groups. Several of the players will continue their athletic and academic careers uh, in the fall. Frankie Tagliaferri will he head to Penn State University. Kara Camarco will go to Dayton University. Tara Walensek will go to Miami University of Ohio, and Nicole Lowley will attend New Jersey Institute of Technology. Coach Doug Phillips received uh, the soccer award given to him by the NJSIAA earlier this month, so congratulations to you, Coach, and congratulations to the 2016 Colts Neck High School girls soccer team. <laughs> Colts Neck Cross Country had one of its most impressive years in school history. Both our boys and girls cross country teams had outstanding seasons. At this time, I would like to call Coach Joe, Joe Likes and Jim Schlentz and the Colts Neck High School girls cross country team to the front. <laughs> team members include Colleen Megerly, Del Delia Russo, Eva Gibson, Rayanne Genitasio, Katie Anderson, Natalie Shapiro, Elizabeth Ohoro, and Dominique Macia. This year, the girls' country team earned the following distinctions. They were Monmouth County champions, short conference champions, group three state champions. They placed sixth in the meet of champions at the, uh, and at season to end, they were ranked 11th in the Northeast region. Individual honors included, Delia Russo was named third team All-State Group Three, Eva Gibson was named third team All-State Group Three, Colleen Megerly was named first team All-Shore, first team All-State Group Three, and third team All-State for all groups. Coach Likes and Coach Schlentz were named New Jersey State Girls Cross Country Co-Coaches of the Year by the Star-Ledger. Congratulations to the 2016 Colts Neck High School Girls Cross Country. This year's Colts Neck High School boys cross country team met with similar success to that of our girls team during the 2016 campaign. Uh, at this time, I'd like to call the boys team down. <laughs> team members include Jordan Brennan, Matt Schaefer, Kevin Berry, Anthony Russo, Brad D'Antuano, Liam Hoagland, Matt Hartman, Gavin McDonald, and Alberto Rodriguez. This year, the boys cross country team earned the following distinctions. They were crowned North Jersey Two Group Three section winners, Group Three state champions. They were second in the meet of champions. They finished the season ranked fourth in the Northeast and 23 in the United States. 
Individual honors include Matt Schaefer, who was named first team all shore, third team all state group three. Kevin Berry was named second team all shore, second team all state group three. Anthony Russo was named first team all shore, first team all state group three, and second team all state for all groups. And Jordan Brandon was named first team all state, I'm sorry, first team all shore, first team all state group three, first team all state all groups. And he finished in the top 25 Nike Nationals held in Oregon earlier this month. He will be going to Iona on an athletic scholarship in the fall of 2017. Coach Jim Schlentz was named Short Conference Boys Cross Country Coach of the Year. Congratulations to the 2016 Colsec High School Boys Cross Country Year. medals for Colsec High School. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Arnero. And now I'd like to call Mr. Jewel up from the old high school. <laughs> trails 
and some of the wildlife and plants that are in the area so that if you're walking the trails, you know what you're looking at. And it was especially useful as the kids who attended summer camp this past summer could um, walk on the trail, see that what they were looking at, and read about all the information about them that Nick had put on the sign. So a very hands-on, practical project, for sure. Richard Gow's project, first of all, he fundraised over $2,500 for the sale of drawstring bags and scrap electronics. And with the money fundraised, he then went to the uh, Chinese American Bible School and re he repainted every single one of the 131 parking lot lines, as well as various handicap signs, arrows, stop signs, and then he turned around and landscaped the garden and the entire area, immediate area around the Chinese American Bible School. <clears throat> With the, he, he was very frugal and still had $1,500 to donate back to the church, so an excellent project. <laughs> And for his Eagle Project, uh, Ryan, Ryan Goldstein, wanted to combine his love of books and uh, work toward his former Hebrew school, work for his former Hebrew school. And in his project, he designed and created seven furniture grade carts. Two were going to be for books and five for school supplies. And this involved purchasing the plywood, cutting it according to plans, sanding, attaching the edging, assembling the planks into the cart shape, and then lacquering the carts. The project was completed in four work sessions over three different intensive weekends with help from friends, family, and scout volunteers. So congratulations. <laughs> and now I, I will introduce uh, Mr. Jason Longo, our Sika, who's here for recognition of our Thank you, and congratulations to all the medal recipients this evening. You should all be very proud of your accomplishments. I'd like to call down our field hockey team this evening. So the Freehold High School field hockey team had another successful season. Even with the transition to a new coach, the team never skipped a beat and picked up right where they left off last year. The team defeated rivals Middletown North and Freehold Township to capture a third consecutive A North title. The ladies also defeated Milburn in a very gut-wrenching game that came down to sudden death penalty strokes to win a North 2 Group 3 state sectional title. I'd like to call out their names and I'll also recognize a few individuals near the end. Head coach Donna Heim, assistant coach Mr. Stan Parker, Victoria Tiefenthaler, Alex Bach, Alyssa Correa, Lindsay Kohler, Nicole Ray, Belly Reynoso, Gabby Arancio, Katie Burns, Kelly Govea, Nisa Mackie Guerra, Jillian Ruggiero, Catherine Ricker, Nicole Fasani, Taylor Bennett, Megan Sharkey, Alyssa Barba, Liz Fadiga, Sarah Irvine, Abby Williams, Haley Schneider, and Bridget Clark. We have a couple of new A couple of those individuals received individual accolades, and I would just like Alex Bach to step forward. Alex was all A North division. She was also first team all shore. She is currently deciding whether to attend Monmouth, Lehigh, or Villanova to continue her academic and playing career. Alex? I'd like to call Tori Tiefenthaler to step forward. That's a tongue twister. It's really rough. Um, Tori was first team all A North. She was also first team all A shore, and she was voted as the A North Player of the Year. And Tori has chosen the College of New Jersey to, uh, to continue her career at the collegiate level. Congratulations, ladies. Nice job.
and that wraps up the medal portion for Freehold High School. Uh, congratulations again to everyone, and everyone have a safe, happy holiday season. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Longo. I'd now like to call up Mrs. Higley from Field Township High School. Good evening. I'd like once again to congratulate all the students who are in attendance and the parents for all the time and effort that you put in helping your students get to our events, and I know the time for students, and also the Board of Education and the administration. Um, one, first off, the ones we'd like to honor are students who receive perfect scores from different sections of the SATs. So as I call your name, please come up. Emily Baum, senior, had a perfect score in the critical reading section. Charles Semular, a senior, had a perfect score in the critical reading. <laughs> Michael McCormick, perfect score in the math section. Sean O'Donnell, senior perfect score in the uh, math section um, of the Redesign SAT. And Anna Landry, a senior perfect score in the evidence based reading writing portion. I'd also like to recognize. Uh, are commended students for the National Merit Scholarship. We have Charles Lemular, Kaylin Goldberg, Lee <laughs> Chan King, Brian Tondra, and Maya Curzon. also had three Eagle Scouts, so Zach Simon, Jacob Nelson, and Stephen Crackton Temple can please come up. <laughs> As we heard, Zach comes from a family of Scouts. Um, his project focused on improving his high school. In an era when school safety is paramount, Zach came up with an idea to increase student safety during um, potential lockdown. This was done by designing and installing blackout shades throughout every classroom and window at Freehold Township High School. Zach spent many summer days with his family and friends and recruited to help him achieve his goal, and the installation was complete, and we've already used it for two lockdowns. It's been very successful. Jacob Nelson. Um, joined the Scouts also in second grade as a way to meet people. He said he didn't know or expect that it would lead to some of the best experience of his life. Jacob um, attributes many of the opportunities he's had to his time in Scouts. For his service project, Jacob set up a 20-foot slide pole on an 11-foot by 11-foot base in front of Oakley Farmhouse. <coughs> the bricks that he used can also be engraved with hopes that the proceeds from that, the engraved bricks will go to Trail Township Heritage Society. Stephen Crafting Temple also began scouting at the age of six, and his goal was to help the environment. To that end, Stephen's service project was the construction of four bathhouses at Camp Topaninas. Included in the bathhouses are educational facts for the campers to better understand the environmental benefits of baths. who will recognize additional Freehold Township recipients. Thank you, thank you, board, and everybody else for coming out this evening. Freehold Township High School could not be more proud of our musical accomplishments so far this year. We had nine students selected to the All Short Chorus. I'm going to ask them to come up as I call their name. Tatiana Burke. <laughs> Alyssa Bonito. James Harris. Dana Skirba, Emily Schultz, and Sydney Wisdom.
We also had four students named to Region 2 Band and Percussion Ensemble. Uh, this came in a little late from my band director, so I'm not sure if any of them made it out this evening, but uh, these four students will have a chance to audition for All-State Band and Orchestra in January. The four students we have are Matthew Gallego, Chris Garrick, Abigail Kim, and Dominic Scali. Congratulations again to our All Shore Chorus and All Region Band honorees. <laughs> Athletically, Freehold Township is celebrating both individual and team accomplishments this evening. We had the following individuals earn various accolades for their uh, achievements throughout the fall 2016 season. Uh, I think only Adrian is here, uh, so I'll save him for last. Uh, we have Jada Colbert. She uh, was Girls Soccer, first team all short. Her sister Jasmine Colbert uh, was also first team all short in Girls Soccer, third team all state, and Jasmine was the A North Player of the Year. Anthony Lottie in football was first team all short, and he will be continuing his football career at the University of Pennsylvania. And then Adrian Barajas, come on up, Adrian. <laughs> Adrian's a boys soccer player, he is first team all short and recently committed to continue his soccer career at Fairleigh Dickinson University. <laughs> and as I said, we also had some team accomplishments. Uh, for that, I'm going to ask the field hockey team to come on up. They've been hanging out in the back. Our field hockey team is pulling double duty this evening. Uh, and by that, I mean we are recognizing them not only for their accomplishments in terms of wins and losses, uh, but more than that. They won their third consecutive Central Jersey Group 4 State Championship this year. Um, but maybe more importantly, they were voting the Monmouth County Sportsmanship Award winners by the field hockey referees. This is a testament to Coach Kara Masseri and her assistants, Coach Nicola Luzzi, Coach Brittany Deutsch, and Coach Erica Lotz. We are proud to win, but we are proud that we win the right way with positive sportsmanship. So congratulations to all the girls on the field hockey team, Elena Andrea, Jessica Applegate, Renata Bowdy, Emma Buttram, Raven Dunn, Julia Erickson, Sarah Fackel, Madison Hoskins, Samara Mala, Kirsten Murphy, Kaylee Perman, Samantha Perskin, Gabriella Spieler, Madison Stein, Brittany Tomachevich, Haley Verga, and Callie Williams. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> Again, congratulations to all of our award winners. Uh, have a great evening, everybody. Happy holidays. As the host school, they had the distinction of, of going last, but certainly not least. I'd like to call Dr. Angelosi from Manalapi High School. that our students are being recognized for, National Merit Scholarship Commended Students, National Merit Scholarship Semi-Finalists, and National AP Scholars. And I know that Mr. Boylan mentioned it before, and every year we do have National AP Scholars, but it's a huge honor when students accomplish this by the end of their junior year. And tonight we have 10 of them. As opposed to calling the students up multiple times, I'm going to read off their names followed by all of the academic accomplishments at once. Uh, we have three students that could not be with us this evening. They include Raymond Costa, National AP Scholar and National Merit Semi-Finalist, Court Chen, National AP Scholar and National Merit Semi-Finalist, and Court just got accepted to Princeton University a few days ago. 
and Justin Musella, National Merit Semi-Finalist. And now on to the students that are hopefully still with us this evening. Benjamin Chan, National AP Scholar. Andrew Gleiser, National AP Scholar and National Merit Commendant Student. Rebecca Gronowski, National AP Scholar and National Merit Semi-Finalist. Aditya Kumar, National AP Scholar and National Merit Commendant Student. Kiho Kwan, National AP Scholar and National Merit Semi-Finalist. <laughs> Maxwell LeBron, National AP Scholar. <laughs> Jeffrey Marshall, National AP Scholar. <laughs> Patrick Roach, National AP Scholar. Heather Berger, National Merit Commended Student. And Callahan Martin, National Merit Commended Student. With that, I'm going to hand it over to John Hine, Manalapan High School Supervisor of Extracurricular Activities, who will recognize a couple of our student athletes for their extraordinary football season. Mr. Hine? Thank you, Dr. Angelos. Congratulations once again, everyone. Good evening, and um, congratulations to all of the recipients here from Manalapan High School and the other high schools. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to announce Manalapan High School's two athletic recipients for FRHSD medals tonight. I'd like to call up Naeem Mayfield and Sal Tardona. Guys, <laughs> Our football team had an extremely successful season this past season, uh, finishing an enviable 11 and one, with the last loss coming at the state championship game. Two of the reasons for this season's success stand before you. Junior Sal Tardona was an essential part of our defense this season, notching 120 tackles as a middle linebacker. He was named First Team All-A North and First Team All-Shore. Junior Naeem Naeem Mayfield was also an integral part of our offense this year, amassing 1,785 yards rushing and 26 TDs. He was named First Team All-A North, First Team All-Shore, First Team All-State Group 5. Gentlemen, congratulations. <laughs> Mr. Hyman, we will take a uh, 60 second recess to get on with regular board business. Those of you who would like to stay, you're more than welcome to. Otherwise, happy holidays to all. Thank you for coming out to support your children tonight. So I'd like to uh, continue with the superintendent's report at this point in time. Uh, just a few notes. Obviously, the holiday season is upon us, so our holiday concerts are in full swing across our six high schools. Uh, phenomenal shows, I, I, and, and the um, community turnout has been tremendous. I think the last one left is Marlboro's tomorrow evening, and I think every other high school has, has, has gone. Uh, we were also fortunate on December 2nd to host the Teen Challenge uh, at the Central Administration Building, an awesome opportunity for our students' teams from each of our six high schools, along with Allentown High School, uh, compete in an ethical challenge, where they're presented with an ethical dilemma and they have to uh, debate and discuss that dilemma, and then teams are, are, are chosen, selected as the winners by uh, a panel of judges, um, and it's done in conjunction with the Greater Monmouth Chamber of Commerce, which is a terrific partnership, and they've been a, a great friend to the Friel Regional High School District, uh, and it was a wonderful competition between our, our, our six schools. Um, we had our executive student cabinet meeting last week, Dr. Moore, myself, and uh, Mrs. Schneider from the Curriculum Instruction Office, uh, worked with our, our cabinet members to uh, go through Dr. Moore, walk them through an empathy mapping exercise to uh, really get at the heart of what does student-centered learning look like, what does student agency look like, what does personalized learning look like to, to, to them as that's the heart of our, our, our next strategic plan, which uh, the development is underway. We're in year five of our current plan, and we're looking forward, forward to the opportunity of uh, rebooting uh, all that's worked from that plan and extending that 
uh, really with a, 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 a central focus around uh, the individual student and, 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 and the student experience uh, as the heart of what we're going to do. Um, last Friday we had our uh, ROTC annual pass and review at Colts Neck High School. Uh, tremendous opportunity to see the hard work that that group puts in. Uh, they're, they're headed down to Pensacola this year. Uh, last year they were named number two in the nation in terms of their unit. Uh, we're hoping for number one this year. And we also on November 30th had a ninth and 10th grade uh, admissions planning evening uh, for our parents of ninth and 10th graders, uh, sponsored by our, 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 our guidance departments. And, and it's one of the things that we've uh, done in response to a lot of feedback we've received over the past several years about really pushing down information about the college application process, the process of how do I prepare myself uh, for life beyond uh, high school, and, and from a parental standpoint, of uh, an informational standpoint, and uh, we've been running uh, some of these ninth and 10th grade evenings and, and, and drawing six, seven, eight hundred parents to them, so it's a, it's a testament uh, to the guidance and operations, Ms. Howell and the guidance supervisors putting that together. That's been a nice addition to what we do. Uh, and then um, finally, I was uh, I was honored to have an opportunity last Monday to meet with the acting commissioner on behalf of the Garden State Coalition of Schools uh, for a few hours with Kim Harrington, who is the, the, the acting commissioner of education. Uh, and the point of our meeting was really to discuss uh, some budget priorities as as the, the budget season is upon us. Um, just suggesting areas that we thought uh, would be beneficial from a state perspective. Uh, if you're going to maximize dollars, and if you're faced with real difficult choices, where we felt that that those funds were, were most important for all students, so it was a wonderful opportunity. And that concludes my report. I'll turn it over to Mr. Boyce to discuss the uh, audit presentation. So, uh, board included on the board's agenda is uh, your acceptance of the um, comprehensive annual. Uh, report, which is the audit process, annual process um, that from that you hired an independent, qualified financial auditors uh, come in. They they take a look at how we've done things for the year ended June 30th. Okay. Um, so it, the purpose of the financial audit is to um, give assurances to the community that the financial statements we're putting forward are fairly presented. That is the, 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 the most pure sense of the purpose of that. And those financial statements can be relied upon. And that's done for um, bond traders and any other members of the community who want to understand our financial position. So um, before I hand it over to uh, the partner in charge, John, John Swisher, uh, Mr. Sampson wanted to right? Yeah, I, I just wanted to uh, publicly acknowledge, you know, we went through a, a, a very thorough review, and as the superintendent of schools, I had the opportunity to uh, sit with the auditors as part of an exit interview, uh, and uh, just to acknowledge the work of Mr. Boyce and, and Trish Smith uh, and, and her role here in, as the administrator of finance. Um, they, they've done a phenomenal job in, um, I think the auditors can speak to some of the exceptionalism in terms of uh, the work that goes on behind the scenes, but this is um, this is a two hundred million dollar operation. It's an incredibly complex operation, and, and keeping our financial house in order uh, is you know one of our top priorities, obviously. And, and I feel very confident as superintendent of schools about uh, how we've been approaching that uh, through the work in our business department over the past several years. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Swisher for the audit report. Anyway, <laughs> I'll try to do a little bit of both. I apologize for my voice a little bit under the web and tag, hopefully you can hear me. Um, we did just conclude our audit for the period ending June 30th, 2016. The results of that audit are contained in two reports that you should have received. The smaller of the two is the auditor's management report. Uh, that report is required by the state of New Jersey. And in that report, they ask us to report on certain areas of compliance that they find to be important ranging from financial planning, reporting, purchasing, food services, student activities, transportation, etc. This is also the report where you would find any comments or recommendations that we found during the course of our audit. And I'm happy to say that this year, we do not have any recommendations that are found in the report. 
So that's obviously good news and a uh, testament to the good work that the uh, finance department does. Um, the second report, the larger of the two, is the comprehensive annual finance report for the capital. That is where all the numbers are. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of schedules in here, hundreds of pages of numbers, which I'm sure you've all committed to memory by now. Um, before I get into it, it's important to note that the capper is supposed to be prepared by the district and handed to the auditor, and then the auditor audits it. Uh, in most of my districts, and our firm does uh, over 30 districts, we actually assist the client with putting together the capper, assembling the schedules. Uh, I've been doing this for 30 years myself, and for the first time, I literally got cover to cover from the client. Um, as uh, we were talking about before, it's very complex. This is a, a, a big district, but the report in and of itself is very complex. We've got several different uh, methods of accounting in here, and the business office was able to turn the report out pretty much in its entirety, and that's a real credit. I, I, I've not had that yet before, and so that's really excellent. What that means is that I can do really the true auditor's job of basically inserting an opinion in the front, an opinion on the financial status. At the end of the day, that's really what you, you pay the auditor for, to render an opinion as to whether or not the financial statements are free from material misstatement, as Mr. Boyce uh, pointed out. The best opinion that you can get is an unmodified opinion, which again, I'm happy to report you guys were able to do, which means that the financial records were able to be assembled into this report we were able to test the report in detailed testing and sampling and not find any material misstatements. So as Sean said, you can remind us whether it's for a uh, uh, bond issue or just public consumption, uh, the, the numbers that are in here are not material misstatements. That's, that's at the end of the day really what you're paying me to do. Uh, the one schedule that I do point out in the report, which I want to turn to right now, but if you're looking for one schedule to look at, I always recommend the C1. Uh, it's towards the middle of the report after the notice of the financial statements, and it basically just shows you the operations of the district in a more detailed fashion. The revenue lines, the expenditure lines, and most importantly at the bottom, the surplus as to how we fare during the course of the year. And again, I'm, I'm happy to report that the uh, district is in good financial condition. Okay, we do all this compliance testing, yes, your financial statements are fairly stated, but at the end you want to know where you stand fiscally, and you're in good, good position. Uh, a couple of things I'll just point out. I, I constantly harp on this each year. You fund your capital reserve. Okay, your capital reserve is where you're allowed to put money aside for stuff that's contained within your long range facility plan. And each year, at the end of the year, depending upon your operations, you're able to kind of seed that account by putting some money of your regular surplus in there. That means that if you have a capital project that you need to take care of out of pocket, you can take care of it. If the state comes up with grants that they'll be able to match, you just did that recently. Were you able to take advantage of state funds where they matched 40% of your money? Okay, in those cases, you guys get through leases, but you can use your capital reserve for that as well. So always a good idea to do that, especially in a district of this size with a large plant where you have to take care of repairs and things like that. You've got a maintenance reserve and you've got a capital reserve that are pretty well funded. That's excellent as well. And again, uh, for the many years in a row, you keep a very solid, consistent surplus. That's also excellent for the district. I'll take any questions from the board or from the public. Anybody have anything regarding the report? Okay, I'll, I'll take uh, one last thing. Obviously, I, I joke about it being a big report. It is. Uh, any questions you have during the course of the year, you refer them to the business office, to the superintendent, and they get them over to me. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Sir? Yes. Yeah. A school our size, this is our size, should, is there a certain surplus we should have? A common question. Um, quick discussion on surplus. The state of New Jersey, uh, years ago, talked about keeping your surplus at 2% of your operating expenditures. This whole concept of excess surplus, which I don't particularly care for. Um, you have a $200 million budget. And so the question becomes, what should your surplus be? Under your order, not in that. That's up to management to decide. Some people might say, if you three months of payroll, you should have on hand. In these days where, you know, your, your main revenue sources of uh, property taxes and state aid are very stacked, okay? Uh, there's that's not been a precipitous rise out of when your taxes are limited to a 2% increase in state aid has been generally flat, okay? So you really have to 
be conservative. This is my opinion again. I'm the auditor, I'm not supposed to give operational mm -hmm. advice, etc. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, most of my districts these days are conservative. So I look at your surplus, you have you have <coughs> set aside, you have quote unquote excess surplus, which you then turn into a revenue to support your budget two years hence. So the excess surplus from this year, 2016 audit, will be used at a minimum to support your 2018 budget. So it rolls back in. And if you look, and, and I know that Sean does this, if you took like a five year experience here, very stable going forward. So I think your surplus is pretty much where you want it to be. A little higher, a little lower, moving again, the world out of the way. I think you're in pretty good shape right there. Thank you. So we're going to a big house. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anything else? Again, I thank uh, both the superintendent and the uh, superintendent for business for their help and for their staff. Trish Smith, again, bears most of the uh, abuse during the course of the audit <laughs> and, and bears most of the slings and arrows that she does with uh, her professionalism. So I thank you. Any questions? Follow me, Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I don't get much opportunity to uh, thank the people that I work with, so I'm going to grab that opportunity right now. It's a great uh, crew in the business office. This, this work, uh, which is complex financial work, uh, Trish Smith runs point on that. Lorraine Simon works closely with her, but it's really everybody in that office uh, throughout the course of the year that produces the information necessary to assemble that product. So um, I think that's worth recognizing. So it's not going to be worth it. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Boyce. Um, just one uh, additional note uh, tonight about the, the calendar that we're approving. It's, um, it's the first draft of next year's calendar, so folks understand that uh, we made some literally up-to-the-minute revisions uh, before it goes to print, so that copy, which is on the website, will be updated tomorrow to reflect what we <coughs> approve the major... Yeah, go ahead. I'm yeah. sorry. So, um, actually, I thought the best way to disseminate the information on the first three of the calendars was to actually put those here in the yeah, and also note that in there. So, so they're in there. Just, uh, Even better. <laughs> Even better. Um, thank you. Michael, did you want to add anything to the finance? Uh, actually, how about a curriculum committee update? <laughs> Because our finance committee meeting, we met last week, but essentially you just got uh, an overview of what we talked about. But last week we also had a curriculum committee meeting, so I just wanted to talk about that. Uh, we discussed a master's degree research project that a staff member's proposing, and that's actually on the agenda for your approval tonight. We went on to talk about the Learning Center and Academy application timeline it was actually 688th graders that sat for the entrance exam test back on December 3rd, and the notification of the application status for the students should occur uh, somewhere around March 1st. Um, the department is also beginning the process of compiling data for placement next year for the current 8th graders. We got updated on a computer science grant that we received. The first room to be redesigned for this is at Freehold Borough, and the grant was for $86,000. So we've got an update on that process. Um, the curriculum writing for this course actually just started today, I think. The, the administration filed a year one interim report with the DOE, because when you get a grant, there's actually people uh, watching and seeing what you're doing with that money. And um, the application for year two of this is actually coming up. With respect to curriculum writing, we heard about what the plans were for um, which classes we're going to have curriculums written. There's actually 50 teachers involved in the process. And then finally, we wrapped up the meeting hearing all about the high school graduation test requirements. Obviously, at our last meeting, this was something that we talked about, so we went uh, in depth with that. And as you recall, starting with the class of 2021, they're going to have no access to alternative exams, and they are going to be the first class that has to pass specific park tests in order to graduate. And that is it. 
And just to expand on that, Mr. Messinger, um, we still don't have a, 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 a clear answer on that. We've, we've made that request to the state about uh, clarification, and uh, we were advised that uh, at some point this winter there will be a um, there will be more subsequent guidance uh, regarding uh, some of those students that might be in a class where they did not take part in middle school in some accelerated manner. They may not. Uh, they may ultimately be locked in um, to not graduate if they hadn't sat. So the, the, the Department of Education uh, needs to sort that out for us, and we'll hopefully we'll get that information sooner rather than later. Yeah, I just wanted to give the politically correct answer. Because uh, as a lot of things that have to do with the state DOE, there's not a lot of definitive answers from there. But I didn't want to say that. Well, we're ready. <laughs> uh, next, we have public participation, and uh, no one has signed up. So I assume no one wants to speak. How appropriate that is. There are some uh, agenda to the agenda. Um, they're available in the back. Uh, they're all they're all contained in the G section, personnel section. So before we move through that. Okay. Uh, so the agenda goes from G1 to K2, and that includes the addendums that were added. Um, I'd like to take that in one shot. Uh, Motion. Second. Thank you. Uh, discussion? There was a question, Captain. All right. Discussion seeing none. Mr. Boyce? Mr. Acetola? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mrs. Canaria? Yes. Mr. Carollo? Yes. Mrs. Lavin? Yes. Mr. Messinger? Yes, for everything except I one no. Mrs. Sotera? Yes. Mr. Moses? Yes. Okay. Old business, new business. Far be it from me to um, have a board meeting go longer than it should. <laughs> My name would never appear in that sort of elongated board meeting. I do want to say um, I want to thank the board for the support over the last couple of years that I've been president. This is my last meeting as president of the Board of Education. Um, I have enjoyed my time. I want to thank all the administrators at Central Administration and at all the high schools for all the hard work that they do. Um, I have a little, little bit of wisdom. You can take it or leave it. And always remember my grandmother telling me, never take yourself too seriously. I hope we all remember that. Okay, so we have a uh, motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion. Sam? Second. Motion. Thank you, Pete. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. For the last time, so shall you say, so shall it be written. Thank you. <laughs>